Hi, it's Alaska Granny. If you want to make sure that you're complete with your prepping supplies, make sure that you have some very simple ways to start fires. Here are some very simple ways to make your own fire starters that are practically free, probably are things you have around the house, and can be very convenient whether you're trying to start a campfire, a fire pit in your backyard, or even the fireplace in your house. There are a lot of reasons besides survival situations that we want to be able to start a fire. So just having the basic supplies and the basic knowledge is going to help us have an easier time facing any of our challenges. The first easy way to make a fire starter that's absolutely free, get an empty toilet tissue roll, stuff it full of dryer lint and this stuff is going to be flammable. It's going to burn up very swiftly. Pack your empty cardboard roll full of dryer lint and then you can even take a piece of wax paper. Wax paper, because it has wax on it, is extremely flammable also. So you can take the piece of wax paper roll it around the tube and just twist the ends and there you go. Light the ends and you've got a long lasting fire starter that's going to work even in wet weather because the wax paper is going to help protect the insides from getting wet. Grab a jar of petroleum jelly and you probably have either cotton rounds or cotton balls. Then you just open the petroleum jelly, dab your cotton, and that's all you have to do. You can even rub a bunch of these together, store them in a little Ziploc bag, and you can put it with your bug out bag or your outdoor gear so that you're ready to start a fire if you need to. If you don't have petroleum jelly, grab a chapstick or a lip balm and rub that onto a cotton ball, and that's going to work the same way that the petroleum jelly. It's going to be great. The days of the pandemic are waning, so likely you have some hand sanitizer. You can pour one of these right onto a cotton ball and light it on fire and these are great fire starters as well because they're made out of alcohol. Don't forget stale chips. They're loaded with oil and they work great as a fire starter. Scatter them down where you want to start a fire, light them up and there you go. Your fire is going to be crackling in no time with your stale chips. Look for little empty containers, Altoids or Tic Tac. Maybe you can use these to store some waterproof matches or into an Altoid, since it's a little larger, you could store a whole collection of these little fire starters and then they're in an airtight, handy, sturdy container. Altoids tins are handy for all kinds of little emergency and on-the-go kits, everything from a fishing kit to a sewing kit to a fire starting kit. So when you're looking around at things in your home, think to yourself, is this useful? How can I use it? What else could I do with it to help me have an easier time in a challenging situation? Something I always include in my fire starting kits is a piece of aluminum foil. You can fold it up, put it with your fire starters, and then if you have wet ground or it's very cold, you can unfold it, put, say, your cotton ball with the petroleum jelly on it onto the foil. Then you light it, and if the petroleum jelly melts, it stays in a pool on the foil and it will continue to burn. It won't run down onto the ground and be lost or get wet. That's helped me many times when I've been starting fires out in wet weather. Don't forget the actual items that are going to light the fire. You need to have a collection of lighters, matches, waterproof matches, all kinds of different ferro rods and things. If you want the actual survival type gear, go ahead and get some of those as well. You need to have a variety of ways to start a fire, even if it's just in your own backyard. Lighters, matches, clickers, I always call these utility lighters clickers. Have a variety of ways to start those fire starters. And then for example, on the strike on the box matches, you have to have the strip. You can't light these without the strip. It's strike on the box. There are two different chemicals that light the match. One of the chemicals is on the match, one is on the strike plate on the box, and when you rub them together, that's what causes the fire. So make sure if you have strike on the box matches that you keep the strip with it and you keep it dry. For example, store it in a plastic bag to make sure that it stays dry. Another tip, have a sturdy straw, and if your fire just seems to barely be going, you can blow some extra oxygen into it and get that fire starter going. That really helps a lot. You can puff and puff, but sometimes it just seems to blow it everywhere. And with a straw, you can concentrate where you want that stream of air to go. 
So these are just some super easy ways that you can make a fire starting kit. You can put it all together, store it in a Ziploc bag, put it in a paper box, do anything. Assemble it any way that makes sense to you, but put some things together, have it with your bug out gear, have some with your survival supplies, and even with your camping gear so that you don't be caught off guard when you're outside and you want to participate in things like campfires or outdoor cooking. You want to have a selection of items that makes that possible so that your day can continue to go as smoothly as possible. If you have other great easy ways to start fires, leave it in the comments below. The more ways we learn to take care of ourselves and make our lives easier, the more fun and enjoyment we'll have on every single day of our lives. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.